classic quiz format or game show format. As the name tried to imply, three, two, one, it was three things in one. It was a game, it was a quiz, uh, and it was an entertainment. Could we have a trial life? Could we have a trial? Because I don't feel like I'm getting through. Of course, the attraction for three, two, one, when, when I watch it now, is looking back at, at, at the cars, the vehicles that are brand new in pristine condition, and they, they rolled out, and there you've got a Ford Fiesta. You've won tonight's star prize, the brand new car. <laughs> It's great, you know. There was sort of long hair and sideboards and uh, crazy clothes, and it was a great, exciting period, wasn't it? The late 70s, it was rocking. Fantastic acts. You had as singers and comedians. I mean, you had all the top acts of the day, really. I've never been so humiliated since I saw the fee for this show. And um, Chris and I dressed up in some silly outfits. People used to say to me in the street, we always watch to see what you're going to have on this week, what you're going to be dressed in, always watch. And Ted, Ted was, was great. Just sensational. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another session of 321. Now, that wasn't too quick, was it? Now, everybody says it, and it all sounds corny, but it's absolutely true. He was a wonderful professional. Because anything could happen on the show. You didn't and know. Usually did. And usually did, didn't yeah. it, Debbie? And you didn't know what was going to happen next. Somebody could fly in from the from up in the grid on the curvy wire. Somebody could come in through the audience. Somebody could enter through the studio door shooting a gun. You could have a sketch. I'm just a humble serpent at your service. Ooh. <laughs> You're very polite for a serpent. I'm a civil serpent. <laughs> There were some jokes, there were some lovely girls, there was a quiz, there were some songs, there was a chance of winning three grand in a car. Um, and actually, when I watch it now, it stands up quite well as an hour of, of entertainment. Welcome the Brian Rogers Connection. Basically, we had a troop of probably ten girls and ten boys that we used to switch depending what sort of themes were. It's basically the same bunch that did nearly all the series. We never used the artist um, record. We had to re-record, either with session singers or with the dancers. They'd, they'd come up with the idea with the theme, and the theme would lend it was Egyptian or Italian, and then they would say to me, right, there's, there's the theme, let's try and pick some music, let's try and pick, make it either up-tempo or a romantic one, whichever one it was. Um, and it was, it was, it was interesting, because it was every, it was 13 shows on the trot. You never actually got time like, well, we can have three weeks working on that and two weeks working on that. You can't, you couldn't. It was just, the, it, the, the pressure was just unreal, but nice pressure. Right. The whole cast and the people up in Yorkshire and the crew and the, down to the, even the people in the canteen, was, they were fabulous and really good. We'll never pass our kung fu test, so we'll throw away the gear. We'll have to find another way to show there's naught to fear. I'm reading these inane rhymes out on cards. <laughs> All those rhymes. Oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Does this clue have mileage by rail, wing or wheel? Is it treasure or junk? Will it lose its appeal? People used to watch it, and I'm convinced of this. People used to watch it because some they didn't understand the show. A lot of people didn't understand how you could get those clues out of what Ted was reading. Aroma is the key to a gift of good intent. It isn't hired, no spray required. The sweet smells heaven sent. And suddenly they'd think, it's got to be that one, but it, it was nothing like that one. It was something else. <laughs> phrase book. Chris's French phrase book. Now let's see what we have here. Right, of course, the French are noted for perfumes, and the rhyme may have made you think that this is a highly scented prize. We're taking the mickey. That's our habit. Uh -huh. I never understood them. I didn't nobody knew did. the clues. Ted didn't know the clues. Nobody, <laughs> nobody understood them. Uh, would that, uh, would the turntable be ver vertical? That's the problem here. I used to think it would be easier if Ted read out the answer and they had to get the clue. <laughs> 
That would have made more sense, yeah. wouldn't it? I don't know who wrote them. Oh, it was John Bartlett wrote them. Yes, I'm the guilty man. I did, I did the clues. Um, and I've, over the years, from friends, colleagues, people I meet, even now, I still get stick. Red for danger, maybe? Or could that be a shade of red? That could be a clue, possibly. So they were very obscure. Because if you take king, K for the king, from rack, you get RAC. If you send that back, you'd be shouting this shade of red. I do admit that you could probably throw a, a clue rhyme at me now, and I probably wouldn't be able to know what it was. <laughs> I mean, even I used to think, my God, that's a washing machine? And I mean, I would look at it in the morning in the dressing room and read it. I mean, it was in an envelope. No, no, you know. And I would think, how would the people work that out tonight with all them lights and cameras on them? They've got to get a... But listen, they did. <laughs> He's a lovely, dusty bin. Do you like him? Oh, he's a sweeter. I love him dearly. But unfortunately, he's our booby prize. Dusty was a great character for us because it broadened the range of the audience. Uh, obviously, he was a great favourite with the, with the younger kids. Uh, and young children used to love him. And, you know, a lot of the older people watching used to find him quite cute and he'd be dolled up in whatever the theme of the show was. <laughs> Oh, yes, Dusty. Look at that. It looks marvellous. But don't let him fool you, of course. He has to have his bin liner changed three times a day. And he was a tribute to Ian Rowley, who used to uh, design the thing every week, uh, how he'd managed to make him, with what were sort of fairly fundamentally basic moves, uh, he would give the thing character. It was quite extraordinary. I'd like to introduce Dusty Bin, as you all knew him ten years ago. I can still drive him. It was very difficult to drive, but because I developed him, I got used to it. But I'm not used to it now, but we'll try. Hey, Dusty. Oh, well, not too bad, considering ten years has passed. Yeah, most of it still works. I never quite knew whether Ted hated or loved Dusty Bin. You'll have to ask him. I bet you... <laughs> Everybody loved him. The studio people used to talk to him. They'd come and say, how are you doing, Dusty? How are you doing? And, I mean, if it was turned on, I'd actually react to whoever spoke to it. And these are guys... Electricians and spa, you know, the, the, in the studios that were um, not that way inclined would still soften when they saw Dusty. Uh, Carolyn Munro used to love him. Oh my gosh, not, not the bin. Although he was very cute. I mean, he'd always go to all the women. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. <laughs> Dusty was dressed as a matador and we dressed the little dog garbage as a bull. And Ted asked him, what would you do if it was a real bull? Reverse, sit, step there. <laughs> Get away! Get back! Back! Shush! Shush! Ah. <laughs> now, just a minute, Dusty. That's no bull at all. That's your little dog garbage. We know that. Dressed up as a bull. What would you do if you had to face a real bull? Now, come on. What would you do? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> he whips the red cape away to reveal a blunderbuss, and he shoots at the dog. But in the, in the studio rehearsals, as we fired... That operated the switch that fired the gun, it also bowed, shot the dog directly, which burst into flame, and we had to be driven across the studio very quickly to be put out by one of the studio attendants. But <laughs> he's, um, he's done everything. He's, he's caught fish as Huckleberry Finn, he's, he's danced in discos as Frankenstein, he's, he's flown on a magic carpet, he's been a doctor with a huge shrine, he's skied. What other show would try and give personality to a dustbin? But uh, it, it seemed to work. For the first time on British television, we're going to lift the lid on Dusty Bin. So many people have asked me, how does it work? What's inside it? How it was built? What it's controlled by? What I'm going to show you. We bow the bin down like this. Oops. We take the lid off it. And inside, you can see the mechanism. All this kit in here is all military specification. It cost a fortune to have all this built. Um, this was far more advanced than, than any of the Star Wars stuff. 
but because it was in a dustbin, it was never taken seriously. But it had contra body movements, um, it could bow, all those systems could be mixed. This is, this is very, very difficult to do. Ted, Ted had it off, great, I can't do it. I think it was, what was it, three, two, one, something like that. But Ted had it like that, dip, very slick. Three, two, one, and children at home, please don't try and copy what I do, because I've had a letter from a farmer and he says his children help him with the milking, and ever since they've been doing this, the cows have given nothing but yogurt. <laughs> and the bulls are not too happy either. But anyway, there's a lot more fun with three, two, one. Try and do that. Three. three. Two, one, go. Now do it like Ted. Three, two, one. <laughs> Three, two, one. Now, that wasn't too quick, was it? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another sizzling session of surprises, super prizes, secret star guests and sex. The gentle sex, of course. My six sumptuous secretaries, so let's meet them. Girls, three, two, one. Okay, Patsy, and who are our first couple tonight? Well, Ted, we have Roger Carver and his friend Chris Simons, who come from Romford in Essex. He lectures in law, and she does a lot of work for charity. Great, lectures in and, law. Yes, and this is Mr. Rogers. He's our boss. There you go. So we were all standing back, looking at the monitors, waiting to see which was going to be rejected, and which prize we had to bring out. So suddenly he, they'd be looking and somebody would say, oh, he's rejecting the bag, the bag. That's you, Patsy, Patsy, dusty bin. Right over the bin. Rejected it. Have a look. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> no, hang on, he's changed his mind. No, he's not rejecting the bag. Um, oh, hang on a minute, the spoon, the spoon. Patsy, that is you again, quickly. Get over to the bathroom suite. Oh, crap. There he is, there he is. There's a towel. You see things because the presents oh, were all in we different went, wings. Oh. All the presents were in different places. It was and you never knew which one at which time. So I mean the whole thing was just care. You had people going, but joy, joy, joy. You know, everything in the front looked nice and calm. Yeah, it was really everything chaotic, was wonderful. It and at the back. But that's what was so good about it, really. We had some fun though. A lot of fun. And everybody got on so well. <laughs> Hey, girls, this is great. Look, but you don't have to bow in front of me. I mean... Who's bowing? Marie's lost one of her contact lenses. Oh, great, great. <laughs> Look at that, girl. They fold up and you can... And I was scared around. about riding the bike. And then I went a bit too fast and practically went over the blooming handlebars. And <laughs> oh, we had a hovercraft that ran away. Oh, a yeah. Did you hear about that? He lost control of the flipping thing. And it went round the studio. Do you remember? Well, they did dress us in some weird things. <laughs> Didn't they, Joyce? <laughs> Oh my yeah. goodness. Hot pants, boots, boots. On you, glasses. Moira and Doug have scored seven. Which is pretty good. That 63 pounds a question you're playing for next time. It's like I couldn't glasses. stand the glasses. Here they are again for the fifth week running. Oh, well, John, and you were a, lo a joke. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. <laughs> but, you know, you Speak for yourself, Jen. Thank you. <laughs> Meet the ladies with the question. Lady, that's lovely. Caroline Monroe is here. <laughs> Lady. Yeah. Lovelier than ever, Caroline. And uh, of course, having a theme like secret agents, I saw you again in the Bond film. You, you've Indeed. done a couple of those, haven't you? In fact, I've only done one. The, I, it's, it's I keep seeing the same one. That's Spy it. Lovely. Yes. But listen, that bit, you did the bit in the helicopter. I all did. That. Yes, Naomi. Yes, I did. Naomi. Yeah. Baddie. Yeah, it's not too bad. But listen, the main responsibility would be to look after the contestants and to kind of put them at ease backstage, really. Have a little chat with them, find out their names and, and their occupations, their work, what they did. And, and really, and, and we met them maybe about half an hour before, so not that long before. Um, and they, they, I tried to remember if they actually walked through it. I think they walked through it once, but not with any dialogue in particular. I think they just kind of came to their mark and, and I had to guide them in, we had to guide them in. 
um, introduce them to Ted. So I suppose that was my r main responsibility. And then, and then wearing these wonderful creations. <laughs> I'm the genie of evil desires. Yes, I know. <laughs> the swinging 60s really is the theme. <laughs> and again. So every week was a different theme, so we would be dressed accordingly if it was... I'm trying to think what springs to mind. There was one that sprang to mind. Um, it was kind of a southern bell type look. What a great dress. Indeed it is. Listen, great big southern bell creations. I mean, that was, that was quite amazing. And, um, and then another was a circus. And I don't think I wore... I don't think I wore a lot for the circus, but kind of fishnet tights and something red and black, I seem to remember. Go to my dressing room. If I'm not there by 10 o'clock, start without me. So it was always something different. You never quite knew. And, and um, the nice thing was, we, with the uh, more wearable outfits, we'd, we'd get a chance to have a buy, which we did, which was nice. when I was Nana Muscori. Oh, that was the most frightening thing of my life. <laughs> and what actually made me laugh was she used to explain at great length in English what the song was all about and then sing the song and it would be a very short Greek song. And I, this gave me an idea for a sketch. So I wrote this sketch, which was based on having a very, very long explanation and the, and the song being very, very, very short. You know, that was the premise for the sketch. So I was going to do it as Nana Muscuri, and Mike Newman was the Greek band leader. And uh, on the day, uh, things went wrong in the studio, so we ran out of rehearsal time. And at four o'clock, at five to four, I was still in makeup, having my Nana Muscuri wig, uh, dress, and everything, and I was being fitted for the glasses. And they said, quick, quick, get in there, get in there. I got in just in time to test it on camera, and they said, right, that's it, break now till five. So we couldn't rehearse it. And on the show, we'd arranged for it to be a surprise for the audience, you know, to say, for them to think it was the real Nana Muscuri, which is why Ted never introduced me by name when he introduced it. He said, Now, this is a lady who, in the truest sense of the word, needs no introduction at all. Of course, I'd got my back to camera, the lights come up, and I'm there with my arms out, you know, the classic Nana Muscuri yeah. pose, and I turned around, and thank God... As I turned round, some woman in the audience shrieked with laughter. Thank you. And now I should like to sing for you in Greek one of my own favourite little songs. It is a love song. Oh, what a frightening, frightening moment that was to actually go out on television. Because you knew on Saturday night 15 million people would be watching this and you knew you hadn't rehearsed <laughs> it. Oh, dear. Very frightening. Oh. It is a love song which tells the story of a goat herd, a little boy called Yanni Gotopoulos, and an olive grower, a little girl famous for her big olives. She is called Vespina Titinokoros. The little boy... The little boy offers his hand in marriage, but sadly, the little girl sings to him of the olive without a stone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Kitazo tika tika tomonama mufina yani gotopolas. Megalono elies tomonama mufina despina titi no koros. Elies agasena maramu teluna sukano gotopolas. Meto ano masu.
say like a Ken Dodd or a Frankie Howard. Oh, now, no titters. <laughs> they would go on long after the camera had finished for the audience, because we had the live audience there. How tatty hilarious to be with you here this evening, here in this magnificent shed. This... <laughs> this... This tribute to superglue. This... This theatre of the imagination. Have you all got a good imagination? Good, good. You'll need it. The elephant hasn't turned up. <laughs> I must just compose myself for an incantation. Does that mean... No, it doesn't. <laughs> right. Where are we, anyway? Pardon? Where are we? It's three, two, one. Oh, Roy Rogers. Ted Rogers. Oh. <laughs> Oi, trigger. Listen. Mm. <laughs> this trick is called the Nottingham Rope Trick. Now, it's called the Nottingham Rope Trick because you start off by taking the two ends of the rope and knotting them together. And when you've done that, what you... It could be worse. I could be here in person. <laughs> wow, this is ridiculous. <laughs> These people think I'm hackers. <laughs> oh, come on, get your finger out. It's all Greek to me. Yeah, oh, God. I'm, I'm sure someone's taken the myth. <laughs> the attraction for 321 when, when I watch it now is looking back at, at, at the cars the vehicles that are brand new in pristine condition and they, they rolled out and there you've got a Ford Fiesta <laughs> bang and it's great a long hair and sideboards and uh, crazy clothes and it was great exciting period wasn't it had the late 70s rocking Look at that. Hold my hand. You gotta let it loose. Now look at that. That's in fact operable right now. I'm shooting you. There's the zoom out and the zoom in. Marvellous thing. It's talking as well, of course. There's, there's the microphone as well. And then adjustable double bed. Mark it out in the rehearsal room, and they say, right, there's the water, there's the bridge, there's where you're dancing. You can go over the bridge, come down, or whatever. And then we actually go in and see it, what they've done, and actually make it look like you're in Venice. It was just amazing. The moonbeams glisten, and the stars are white. The set designers, they make or break, really, what 321 was about. And every week, was totally different. The set designers and the costumes and the music. And I think the lavishness of it lent itself to what we did in choreography. What the costumes did. What Ted did, what every, every single person changed every week. How can they see with sequins in their eyes? We never bothered about money. I mean, we never ever told that you can't afford this. It was a, a good show, and we just uh, went ahead. We wanted a, an elaborate set. We got an elaborate set. It's disgusting, razzle-dazzle and they'll make you a star. expensive and something we don't get today.
There we are, sir. There is a MacGuffin. A what? This is a hat, but are you going to call it a MacGuffin? That is a MacGuffin, and that is a MacGuffin, and that is a MacGuffin. I'll take your word for it. I used to have to come up and say, and this is your MacGuffin, and explain this thing, and I had no we idea. Was being rude, yes. We didn't know what the MacGuffin was. I had no idea what I was talking about. Now then, what are you leaving for the MacGuffin? Titfer. Oh, your tit for tat. Yes. Your pith helmet. Yes, my pith helmet. And you have, yes, I said that right. <laughs> yes. And you have a rhyme? Yes, I do. This prize is sort of unusual. You can move it for pleasure or sport. When you wind up inside, it'll give you a ride without visible means of support. <laughs> ah, there you are. Thank okay. you very much indeed. Big, big smile for Ted, and off yes. you go, and you go, what does that mean? I've got no idea. MacGuffins were like, like clues that you'd bring in. I'd, I'd come on as, uh, uh, like, uh, Kirk Douglas or Peter Falk doing Columbo, and I'd bring something out of that sketch. There's one final thing I'd like to leave you. I'm going to leave you this. Oh. <laughs> Heavy smoker. <laughs> Put it on the table and, it, and then you'd read a rhyme that had nothing to do with anything and nobody could understand what the clues were, but the, there was a very deep hidden meaning within the clues and you read uh, the, the question out and then the couple have to make a selection as to which they're going to lose. So, the toy bunny brought in by uh, Cheryl, of course, and the spur, which was brought in by Pete Aitken. Which one of those would you like to hear again? Which one? Bunny, just one more. Yeah. It's up to you. Yeah. Really to you hear the bunny again? Right, OK. Cheryl said if you win this prize, we'll be the best of friends, but stick to 30 round the bends. It's a greyhound. Oh, is it, it really is, is it? He's yeah. so sure it's a greyhound. I know. And he loves it too. He loves greyhound racing, yes. isn't it? What are you going to do then, David? Which one's going? Yeah. Definitely Go on, the toy bunny? bunny? Yes. Yay! OK. Cheryl Murray's toy bunny said if you win this prize, we'll be the best of friends, but stick to 30 round the bends. Now then, the clue, of course, was a toy bunny, and who or what is a man's best friend? A dog. Right, yeah. Now, what kind of dog would chase a bunny round bends? You're absolutely right. Your very own greyhound. <laughs> oh, oh, dear. Look at that. Thank you very much indeed. And Patsy, who are our third couple tonight? Well, my couple are Gary Waters and his fiancée, Suzanne Danan, who come from the Wirral in Merseyside. Well, my, my mum saw an advert in the, um, in the local newspaper that said um, that they requ Yorkshire Television required young couples for a TV quiz show. So uh, we applied and then we were accepted. And we didn't know anything about the show because it was brand new, so it's never been on before. We stay into a dressing room. Uh, made up, and then uh, out on the set. Ladies and gentlemen, Ted Rogers. That's when uh, the shock happened of uh, realising that it was actually filmed in front of a live studio. Thank you very much indeed. That's when the nerves really took a hold. There wasn't the awareness of being a contestant on television, which is around now. Uh, we were doing really well. In fact, we were probably in the lead then. Yeah. And then came the uh, ever-memorable question, we want the names of countries on the mainland of South America, all right? So countries on the mainland of South America, and I will start you with Paraguay. Paraguay. Mozambique. I thought he'd said South Africa, and uh, the memorable answer was Mozambique, which was obviously <laughs> totally wrong. That's in Africa, not South America. There was a tie break, a tie break question. This TV personality was born in London in 1921. And I remember answering, and the answer was Bruce Forsyth. <laughs> Three years he compared Sunday night at the Palladium. Ted Rogers. Bruce Forsyth. No, not Ted Rogers, Bruce Forsyth. You were right. And you yeah. picked me up in the air, yeah. And, uh, and we got through to the final. Yeah, congratulations. Oh, my. I think it was me that gave the car away. One has to go. Which one will it be? Um, well... I don't know. I think the bracelet. What do you think? It's tonight's star prize, oh, the car! Yes. <laughs> and there was also, um, there was a mink coat, wasn't there? Yes. Which um, one of the girls modelled came down with a mink coat. See what it feels like. And uh, he put it round the shoulders, he said oh, to me, you know, would you like to go to the match in that? <laughs> but, um... Oh, that was the one you had to do about five takes of as well, yeah. wasn't it? Never mind the car now. Go to the match in it, then. <laughs> <laughs> you 
Yes, we thank you. I'm sure you're right. We actually won about, uh, as that, a thousand pounds worth of electrical equipment. Some cooking and mixing. Uh, there was a yeah, Kenwood chef and um, a lawnmower, hedge cutter. Still in use today. Yes, a shaver, a tea's maid. <laughs> and £100 worth of taxi fares to get yes. home. Yeah, it's great. Lovely, Thanks lovely folks. They've been yeah. terrific people to be on the show. Good night, everybody. Well, we got a phone call about uh, half past 11 at night, one Saturday night, from friends, and mm -hmm. uh, they said, uh, quick, put Challenge TV on. Uh, you're actually on the television with 3, 2, 1. So that was the first opportunity we had to, to get a video of, of the show. And as I said, ever since then, uh, our daughter Jessica has uh, been loaning it out to friends. <laughs> and uh, the long hair and the moustache and everything else <laughs> and that keeps flowing back and, uh, and the, uh, the head in embarrassment. But it was, yeah, it's, it's a good reminder only for us now and again, sort of plugs in when friends come round and uh, have a good laugh. And his gear, Ted's gear was great. You know, he used to wear some fantastic. There's one show I had, and he had like a blue blazer, and with like white piping around it, and it was like. But Ted was always sharp. A very immaculate man. Isn't oh, he? very yes, immaculate, yes. very a tailor's dream. Yeah, Ted. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Very immaculate, very charming. So let me give you one important tip. You ain't got nothing if you ain't got so much. It was also one of the assets of the show that you did see these four other wonderful prizes and the bin. So that there appeared to be a huge prizes which were being given away or being lost. But it was a con. You had to admit it was a con in that we showed £10,000 worth of prizes. Everybody said, look what they're giving away. Look at those prizes. Take a look at this. come with the girls sitting there, geisha girls or whatever they were. Yeah. You'd, have a, you'd have a huge Japanese sauna with somebody dressed up inside. <laughs> but you haven't won that. But you haven't won that. And so no. we'll send that away. Yes, it's like... <laughs> really a superb microwave oven. There's also a set of copper pans there, a set of French steel kitchen knives and an automatic coffee machine and a full range of microwave cookware. Just look at that. Fabulous prize. I'm afraid, again, Caroline, thank you. It has to go. It's been rejected. Thank you very much. And um, believe me, people enjoyed watching other people lose stuff as much as they did win stuff. Look at these two fabulous mink coats, worth a lot of money. You haven't won those, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, ladies and gentlemen, 3 2 won the show for fabulous prizes. It's a real knockout prize, this, but I'm afraid you have turned it down. So thank you, Fiona. It has to go Bob and Uh We had fairly constricted budgets. Uh, there were a lot of limits then. And so the car could only be won four times throughout the series. Yeah! And it was one of the first four shows. And we're in terrible problems. We had to make the questions a lot harder. So I'm afraid, folks, all you do get is brand new dustbin, and here it is. <laughs> we were almost in tears when they won the bin. We used to think, oh, my gosh, not, not the bin. Although it was very cute, I must say. And we came to then to the elimination question, which was a progressive thing and always finished up with something that was so obvious, almost as obvious as the contestant's own name. This is a composer, German by birth, English by adoption. Best known for an oratorial, oratorio published in 1741. It was called Messiah. You're bound to know is Handel. But it's always difficult when you've got cameras, you know, you've got the big eye looking at you and you can make mistakes. Who is it? Go I used to have this at school. Well, well, you were nearly there. Handel's music. Well, so who's the composer? Chopin. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I can offer it to you. It certainly wasn't. Uh, oh, you said it was. No. In the Beethoven? Other, uh, Beethoven. No, it wasn't Beethoven. <laughs> now, what people don't realise is that that actually was the second question that we'd asked these two 
couples. The previous one was possibly even easier, bearing in mind the name of the show was Easter Parade. That one actually finished up, it's an island, it's in the Pacific, etc, etc, etc. And the last piece of information for them was, well, the name of the island is the theme of tonight's show. Nothing. So then Ted started on the second question. We rehearsed. Oh, we the rehearsed? Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't feel like we did. I think we did. In we, church halls. That's right, in Hammersmith, wasn't it, I think? No, in Leeds. Oh, in Leeds, that's right. God, yes. You can't even remember anything I anymore. Don't know. We, I remember the production day. We rehearsed in the studio on the Tuesday. Um, and then on the Wednesday, it was a, a tech run with makeup and costumes and everything. Uh, and then have a break and then record the entire show from five till eight. And that sounds an ample time, but three hours to do a show where anything could happen on the show. You didn't and you know. And usually did. And usually did, didn't yeah. it, Debbie? Oh, 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 oh. I mean, you know, I mean, there are clips where a camera's moving across and goes briefly out of focus, which you wouldn't allow in this day and age. But, I mean, there was no time to retake things like that. You just had to get on with it. So it wasn't faked in any way. It was very much a case of um, getting on and doing the whole show live, more or less. When they used to bring the cars into the studio... Oh, we used to, we used to, we nearly used to die from asphyxiation with all of those fumes. Do you remember? Yeah, I do. God. Didn't they used to bring two or three cars in? No, there was, there was one show. There was they had one five, show. Do you remember? Look at all this. I can't believe it. It looks like Lex's garage on a bad day. And, and we were sitting in our little box, and we were going, oh. and I don't know how the audience managed to survive. <laughs> we were there for three hours with those cars. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There were a lot of rows and rows of old, uh, rows and rows of old ladies in the audience going, <laughs> and there was Ted at the front trying to be all bright and cheery. If, if, if anyone, <laughs> if anyone from Yorkshire Television is watching this, if people died during those after coming out of those shows, they'll probably have a lot of lawsuits now. <laughs> oh, don't say that. <laughs> Right. First of all, Lindelman! Lindelman! My Lord Mayor, Lady Mares. <clears throat> My gracious Lord Mayor, good gracious Lady Mares. I saw Farmer Giles, he was getting his hay in. I told him that three of his hens had stopped laying. He says, how do you know that? I says, ah, cos I'm smart. I just run them over with my horse and cow. <laughs> I remember loads of very important sportsmen like Henry Cooper. <laughs> The minute you walked in the joint <laughs> to tell you were a man of distinction. We, we met the most incredible people that just would sort of turn up for one show and, and come on and be in a ridiculous sketch yeah. and wear a dress. Spend a little time with me. Yeah. Hey! It was lovely there because I, I met all my idols. Oh, I met Diana Dawes. Oh, she was lovely. Hello there. She was lovely. I just sat there in makeup. She was in the next seat to me being made up, and I was just watching. I had a wonderful made up right ear because I wouldn't turn my head round. All the makeup lady could do was make my ear up. I was just watching Diana all the time. On Mother Kelly's doorstep, Mother Kelly sat was just sensational. I mean, he's, uh, everybody says it, and it all sounds corny, but it's absolutely true. He was a wonderful professional. He's such a nice guy. He is such a nice guy. And, uh, and you know, I mean, he, he, I think he made that. I think he made it for all those years to run it. Um, yeah, ace guy, really nice guy. Uh, Ted was marvellous to work with all the way through. I mean, I, I love working with the man. I'm, I'm a really big softy, Ted. 
Oh, it is wonderful. It's... Um, rehearsed like a dream. Very good, very yeah. professional, and mm -hmm. uh, put us at ease uh, right the way from the start, and uh, came to see us afterwards as well. And Ted, Ted was was great. What do, you think? do you want the one thing we got wrong? The one thing I think we did get wrong on three to one was that we never actually found the way to show people what Ted could do. I mean, Ted was brilliant at what he did in the show, but it was very confining for him. I mean, he was a first-class gags man, and there just wasn't the possibility in the show. He had a couple of minutes at the top where he couldn't display his normal range of topical jokes because the show wasn't going out for another couple of months. So that's, that's the one thing we couldn't get right, but uh, we did try. And here's a gentleman who hardly ever leaves his own show, so tonight we're glad that he's making one of those special appearances. Savour this moment. I've got the hat and the polka dot tie. I've got the cane and the gleam in my eye. I've got the time. Now all I need's the baby. I've got the right inclination for love. I've got the light from the moon up above. I've got the place. Now all I need's the baby. Many girls have held my arms. Many girls have held my arms. The choir. The choir. They're all rehearsing to sing. I'll even be. I'll, even be. I'll to purchase the ring. I made a deal, made a deal for, for a bungalow for two. We'll have it painted green and blue. Boo hoo, but it's incomplete. Till someone awfully sweet says I do. So all I need is the baby and the baby. called Tula, um, who was absolutely gorgeous. Because I was sort of the choreographer and the older, I was sort of known as the mother bunny of the group, if you like. So I was asked to go and ask Tula if she'd speak up, because her voice was a bit low. How well did they do there? Well, Trevor and Janice have scored one, which makes the total of 70 pounds. And I met this one, Patsy, in the corridor, and I said, I've got to ask Tula to speak up. I know. Well, I said, well, the thing is, she's not speaking up because I think she's a guy. And Jan <laughs> and Jenny's uh, jaw dropped like half a mile. And she was absolutely gorgeous, but she was nervous and she had a bit of a deep voice. And I thought, oh, I don't know. A bit dubious here. But anyway, we were all changing it in the, in the green room, you know. She would be quietly in the corner. And I was a bit worried about her. And then before, like, she was going on to do this sketch with Dougie Brown, she had to be a mermaid. And she looked absolutely amazing. But she was so nervous and she said, oh, Patsy. I can't go on. I, I feel ill. I said, don't be silly, Chula. I, I feel dizzy. I said, well, don't worry. I said, just put your head between your knees and I'll get some smelling salts. So I went off and got the smelling salts and everything. I said, oh, Bertie, I can't go. I said, of course you are. You look beautiful. You haven't got any dialogue. I said, so, you know, you'll be fine. Anyway, she went on and she looked great. And poor Dougie, you know, Dougie was struggling, actually, and he broke his back. <laughs> I'm on the captain. Oh, oh. the first aid officer. Oh. Somebody. <laughs> Uh, just, look at that. What do you want the captain for? I want you to marry us. Marry? In half an hour's time, we could be man and fish. <laughs> but just a minute. I mean, marry? How can you marry a mermaid? Well, I can't throw her back unless she's too big. I could just picture it now. It'd be a beautiful affair. I'd be wearing a nice dinner jacket. She can wear a nice white wine sauce and a bit of parsley here and there. <laughs> hey, that'd be a change, wouldn't it? Usually the groom wears the tails. Just a minute. Before you go, aren't you going to leave her as an object? <laughs> But we never ever saw her again after that series, you know. And of course, it, it turned out that she she was a, a a man, and now apparently she really is a woman now, and she's married a millionaire or something, and she's done absolutely fabulously, you know. <laughs> the the 
the second round had varied. Um, in the first series, before I joined the show, the second round of the game was always a sort of physical game. Well, like a sort of generation game, physical game. And they were, they were terrific. And then they replaced it with the state-of-the-art video game, which was an old thing, I think it was called Paddle, if I remember rightly. Now, the game is quite simple, really. If you look at the screen, the contestants, they have a bat, and it's controlled from left to right. You see that? By this control stick here. Now, the object is you have to hit the ball against the wall at the top of the screen. Here we go, then. Three, two, one. It was the most boring video game in the world, but at that time, everybody thought it was wonderful. And the crew were itching to get their fingers on these things. I mean, now you just, again, blush just to think of it. Three Two One was a great vehicle for a lot of people. A lot of acts came came up from uh, appearing on Three Two One to other spin-offs, and it was it was super. Yeah. Very nice to see you. That's the thing. That's the MacGuffin you're leaving in your yes, helmet. Is that right? That's it. Let me tell you about little boy bloomers come blow up your hormones. <laughs> you're probably asked why not we Willy Winky in his nightshirt half an hour down to the high street <laughs> with the wind whistling round his cold little knee clappers. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Jackie Fallow. <Palo. laughs> in your Easter bonnet. My little dog spit. <laughs> now, the reason is because the light from your nose and the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Well, it goes into your eye downwards, and then from your stomach it goes and it comes out <laughs> upwards. And therefore, you look upside down inside. Now, people all. Oh, and dads, boys and girls, everybody, a very happy Christmas to all of you. A very happy Christmas. We hope you're having a terrific time. Now, we know you probably just got over the lunch and you probably still got your fingers on the wishbones. <laughs> so stop doing that with your fingers and try doing that. Now, come on. You know how to do it. Come on, try. That's it. Wish for a whole hour of family fun and you've got it. Can <laughs> we have a look at that? Angie, Eugene, just go over there. Stand there by Patsy. Would you stand just over there? And you can see what you've rejected here. Now, the C was for a casserole, right? The H was for a hairdryer. The R for a record player. The I for an iron. The S for a sewing machine. The T for a tease made. The M for a miniature TV. Just have a look at that there. An A for an amethyst pendant. And an S for a silver candlestick. Now, what about that for a prize? They've rejected it. Shout at me. Anyway, I've got you a present. Hope you didn't buy it. No, no. Good boy, good boy. What you got for me then, eh? A pair of braces. Braces? Yes. Braces? What do I want with a pair of braces? You'll find out in a minute when you realise where I got them. Eh? <laughs> oh! oh! Come here! <laughs> How about that, ladies and gentlemen? How's that for a bevy of beauties? What about the one on the end? What, the one on the end? Well, after a few bevies, she's beautiful as well. Ha! Oh! 
Well, that's cured me sinus. Oh, <laughs> One of these is entirely up to you which one. You don't have to make up your mind now, but I can tell you, in fact, there are foxes here, there are minks here, and, Roger, if you'd like to come along this side here, there's going to be one for you, too. OK, Mireille, who are our third couple? This is Michael Schenkin and his wife, Geraldine, from Glasgow. He is an export sales director, and she is in a final year of a teacher training course. <laughs> who cares? Give us a kiss. <laughs> Well, what other than a St. Bernard dog? And that's what you would have won, a lovely St. Bernard dog. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> oh, you know I'm hopeless at reading maps. You should have let me drive. Well, and hit every asteroid in sight. No, thank you. We'll let the computer do it. time you know it, you thought oh god this is this is crass but as, as the years went by it became so culty and now watching it, mm. it it's amazing what people did on it Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, Samuel, Kings, Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Abaka, Zephyrah, Magad, and Malach. I'd like to thank all of our guest stars, most of all you. Thank you for watching. Same time next week. Have a good week from 3 to 1. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.